Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Assembly Lines Podcast. I am your host, Chris Torrance. So Henry Corbis of Reactive Micro sent me a brand new mocking board kit last week. And so I'm gonna show you how to turn this into this. Here's everything that comes in the new Reactive Micro Mocking Board Kit. So you get the board itself as well as all of the chips, a bunch of resistors, some filter capacitors, uh, there's a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and then just some connectors for the internal Apple speaker. Uh, as far as the chips go, there are two 6522 uh, I.O. port controllers, and these provide the interrupts for the sound chips, which are the AY38913. So these are three voice sound generators. So that gives a total of six voices for the mocking board. And then there is a small inverter chip, uh, just some glue logic, as well as two uh, LM386 uh, audio amplifiers. And these are each 0.7 watts. So Henry has provided sockets for all of these chips with nice machine pins uh, so that they'll be nice and sturdy, but yet you can still remove them. And then comparing this new board to the old one, so here's the old one right here, uh, we can see that the layout is just a little bit cleaner. Uh, he's cleaned up quite a bit of the uh, board itself. He's put a little bit more printing on it just to make it easier to read. Uh, he also fixed the problem with the reversed left and right channels. So if we flip both of these boards over, and I've already labeled this one uh, just so you can tell. So in the old one, the left and right were actually reversed and I had to do some uh, fancy hacks with some resistors up here. In the new one, you can see that Henry has actually rerouted uh, the right and left so they're actually now going to the correct channel on the audio jack. Uh, so one thing that Henry didn't do with the new board was to fix the problem with the mixed channels between the left and right uh, coming from the internal speaker. So if you recall from my earlier video, I had to actually put in a couple extra resistors just to prevent some crosstalk between the two uh, from the sounds coming from the Apple II. And so we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna assemble the board the way it is, and then if we have to, we'll just make some uh, quick mods to it afterward. So Joe Strohsnyder on his Joe's Computer Museum actually went through a detailed live assembly of this board. So I'm not gonna go ahead and go into a lot of details. I think I'll just assemble the whole thing and test it, and then we'll just see uh, how it compares to the old one. Here's the assembled mocking board on the bottom. So the kit is really easy to assemble, and anyone with basic soldering skills should have no problem. The silk screen was clearly labeled, all the components uh, went in with no problems. There were some 100 ohm resistors instead of 10 ohm resistors, uh, but I just went ahead and used them anyway. Joe Strohsnyder noticed the same thing, so I don't think it'll make a difference. And then on the top here, this is the old board. So if we just compare the two, they're actually really similar. The only real difference was the fixing of the stereo jack so that the left and right channels are correct, as I noted earlier. And so you no longer have to do the hack like I did up here with the resistors. And then Henry's also added a jumper here. If you have a speech chip, you can actually get stereo speech from just having a single chip. Uh, I don't actually have one, so it won't do me any good, but I went ahead and soldered in the jumper anyway. All right, I've got the mocking board in slot four. I've got a pair of speakers plugged in to the 3.5 jack on it, and let's go ahead and we'll fire up the Will Harvey's music construction set. Uh, so you can see here the beep from the Apple II, that's actually still coming from the original speaker because I didn't actually wire the motherboard to the mocking board yet. So we'll just wait for the demo to begin and make sure that the mocking board itself is behaving properly. All right, so the sound is clearly coming out of the mocking board, which is great. Now, if you listen really closely, 
you don't hear much stereo separation between the left and right channel. So the treble should be coming out of mostly the left speaker, if I remember correctly, and the bass should be coming out of mostly the right speaker. Uh, but it's pretty muddy. So we're gonna have to make the same modification on this mocking board that I had to do for the other original mocking board. Here's my finished hack to the mocking board kit. So if we look over here, this is the inputs from the Apple II motherboard sound. And then here are my capacitor resistor pairs. So originally right here, there was just a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. And now what I've done is for each of the channels, the left and right, I've put a 0.1 microfarad capacitor in series with a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor. And so then the rest of the circuit gets isolated then from the mixing between these two channels. So let's go ahead and we'll try the music construction set and make sure that the sound separation is occurring. All right, I don't know if you can hear that on the video, but there's now clear separation between the left channel and the right channel. All right, so now that I have two mocking boards, I have to try out Ultima 4 which gave you the possibility of using either one or two mocking boards. And this is the first time I've ever had a chance to actually use two. All right, so there you have it. That's 12 voices total of beautiful mocking board music. So final thoughts, Henry Corbis's mocking board kit is excellent. Uh, the board layout is neat and it was easy to put together. Uh, there was just a few minor quibbles that I had with it. For one, uh, he didn't put in the fix that I had to separate the sound between the two channels. Uh, it's an easy fix to do, uh, so if you do buy the kit then you could just go ahead and do the same fix that I did. It's not actually really necessary because uh, it still sounds really good, but I'm just kind of a purist so I like it to be uh, perfect. And then the other thing is, it didn't come with a cable to connect the Apple II motherboard to the mocking board kit. Uh, this is easy to do, you just get a couple jumper wires uh, with female jacks on either end, uh, but it would have been nice to actually have it in the kit. So anyway, overall, uh, it's a great bargain if you want to put it together yourself, and I'll have the links in the show notes. Thanks for watching.